last time we had talked about uh, yes so last time we had talked about uh, the effect of noise the effect of noise in am and we had worked under the assumption that ac is much greater than n i t and n q t and therefore y t equals root over a c plus yes akshat you want to say something yeah. A C K A M T whole square. Sorry, T plus N I T whole square plus whole square can be approximately written as plus A C K A. Plus, right. So we worked under this assumption, and uh, we saw saw how this turns out. So now, let us work without this convenient assumption. let us work without this convenient assumption and let us say we define eta t this is eta right sorry not n Eta t equals. Adit, can you please mute yourself? Cos two pi f c t plus. Right, I can. write the noise signal like this as well nothing stops me from doing that so we know that uh, this is sir just a second shubhashish yes tell me sir is 5t within cos or is it uh... outside cos because there i don't see a phi t vector uh side yeah, side yeah. so yes this okay. it should be like this sorry about that now is it okay yes sir yeah excellent so this band limited noise so we can write it like this and uh, we can expand it like this now if oh <coughs> so this 
stupidity. Yes. Is it working now? Adit? Is it visible now? Yeah. Now if eta t and ac are or rather so rt is the envelope rt and ac are comparable I get yt equals rt plus ac cos sorry, sorry approximately equals Right. Take square and square root and uh, this is okay. This becomes so I'll expand this yt. Actually, let's scrap scratch this and yt equals root over ac or rt cos psi t plus ac plus ac k m t plus R whole scale plus RT sine psi T. Whole square. This equals square root of R square T cos square psi T plus R square T sine square psi T plus just a second, let me. Yeah. So I'll take RT cos psi T common. So R square T cos square psi T is outside one plus no, no, not this. Let's do it that way only. So the pen is slightly troublesome today. So I'll just cut this and Maybe I'll close one note and open it again and then this will work. Yes. So anyway, let me while one note disconnects or one note restarts, I'll uh, just say this out loud in words. Maybe that will help. So what happens is that uh, this RT, this becomes too large. 
and the expression can be given as 6.20 of your textbook. So you can look at, I'll just write out the that expression over here so that uh, I mean, while one note starts again. So, so this yt can be approximated as rt plus ac cos it plus k a m t os And uh, here what happens is that uh, you see that uh, the major component. <coughs> sorry. Yeah. So here the major component. Instead of the signal of interest now becomes the. Noise IT, which is not a good thing or the envelope of the noise. So instead of following the true signal, we now start following the envelope of the noise. And because of that, uh, we are in trouble. And uh, this is known as the threshold effect that uh, when the noise. Or when the signal to noise ratio exceeds the threshold, then the envelope detector stops working. This is fine. You can actually read this out from the textbook. Sorry, I couldn't. Uh, provide greater detail of this. Let's not spend too much time on this end. Now let us look at. FM. Yeah, someone wants to say something. Yeah. Or the effects of noise. So. In case of FM, the demodulator looks somewhat like uh, so. You have a So this is an addition block. You have. The incoming signal. This. And so yeah, one note uh, has totally crashed the laptop. So and just let. Yes, so this is the signal and. Uh, I add the noise to it.
this is the noise and uh, this is a bandpass filter to limit the input frequency or limit the frequencies just to the band that we are interested in followed by This is known as amplitude limiter. So why would we need an amplitude or what would an amplitude limiter do in an FM signal? Or FM demodulator? Guesswork? I guess it uh, tries to convert it into some form of uh, AM. Means, uh, amplitude limiter. What does what do the words amplitude limiter mean? It reduces the amplitude. Means limit. Yeah, limit the amplitude. The amplitude. Uh, so Bhavnik uh, Bhavnik is right. Limit the amplitude. Now, how would this help us? It can filter out some of the uh, filter. See, it's not a filter. It's not a filter. It means it yes, can it. be used to remove. Uh, the... Let someone else speak. It can be used to remove. Uh, hello. Yeah. It can be used to remove the erratic. Uh, erratic waves or the amplitude variations that are there. Amplitude uh, variations than... would be the right word. Erratic, erratic waves is speaking uh, too, un, too much unnecessarily. So see, FM or angle modulation in general is dependent only on the angle or the phase. So we can get rid of the amplitude or we can uh, actually simply restrict the amplitude to a certain level and uh, uh, see, when we restrict the amplitude of a sinusoid you can use a clipper for example and uh, when once you use a clipper you will get a square wave with a varying frequency right yes sir you clip it uh, at uh, a small amplitude and you get a square wave with a varying frequency. So you can use that square wave uh, <clears throat> for uh, getting the frequency, the instantaneous frequency of the signal. So that's what an what that's the function of an amplitude limiter. Following the amplitude limiter is the discriminator. Discriminator and there is a low pass filter. And then you get. the output yt. Fine. So broadly, this is an M FM demodulator. Now, one note has restarted. Let me Try it out again. So let me copy this over there. Paste. So this is the FM demodulator. Yes, sir. 
what does the discriminator do discriminator just a second i'll yeah so i'm sharing my laptop screen again maybe this time it won't go rogue so i won't use the eraser this time i'll simply scratch out what i don't like slope detector plus fine you know what a slope detector is or rather i would say differentiator and envelope detector right so because uh, we have <coughs> we have talked about uh, how do we demodulate fm signals fine adit yes sir yeah excellent sir. so again we will first work again we will first work under the assumption that ac is much greater than rt for all t fine now eta t equals eta i cos or rather i'll simply why bother about this rt cos 2 pi fct plus psi t fine and this is so this is zero mean circularly symmetric complex gaussian noise so therefore this is if you remember from the last quiz since these are zero mean the envelope can be rayleigh and this is this is uniform in the range minus pi to pi fine yes sir now the trans the signal of interest is ac cos 2 pi fct plus 2 pi kf 0 to t m to d to fine and this we used to write as phi t therefore xt equals st plus eta t equals ac cos 2 pi fct plus phi t plus rt cos 2 pi fct plus psi t right yes sir now this is again a 
this can again be written as qt cos 2 pi fct plus theta t fine i can add i can uh, introduce a few terms subtract a few terms and uh, do some jugglery basic trigonometry or tricks from trigonometry will help me write this where qt will obviously be ac square plus R, square root of or square root of ac square plus rt square and uh, this theta t will actually be phi t plus tan inverse rt sin psi t phi t divided by ac plus rt cos fine or uh, the intuitive explanation is that uh, say this is the so this is zero or this is the so you know po polar coordinates you know how to work in po polar coordinates right yes sir yes yeah so this is or rather this is ac angle theta fine and you add to this or oh, sorry ac angle phi you add to this rt angle psi given that uh, ac is much greater than rt the resultant will be at angle theta and that uh, theta will be or uh, theta t will theta will be phi plus this fine this you can work out using uh, uh, what using your knowledge of trigonometry and polar coordinates fine okay sir anyway this looks right <laughs> because i know this expression is uh, slightly complicated but uh, you can work it out yourself because uh, we do not have the luxury of time anymore so you can work this out yourself and uh, for now assume it to be true again if ac is much greater than rt then theta t equals phi t plus rt by ac sin fine i take a lot of approximations here so tan inverse this thing so the denominator term i approximate it as so i'll take write all the approximations here one if ac greater than greater than rt this is approximately equal to ac fine and at the same time rt over ac is less than less than 1 therefore tan inverse rt over ac 
approximately equal to or tan inverse this thing sine psi t minus phi t approximately equals r t sine psi t minus phi t fine yes sir yeah so anyway intuitively you can actually look at this that uh, this angle the difference between two angles will be uh, basically the magnitude of the, approximately the magnitude of this plus the magnitude of this divided by the two you can actually work this out so use uh, the class 11th vectors and so theta t is this approximately so i'll write an approximately over here and theta t since theta t is approximately this this becomes phi t we know that is 2 pi kf 0 to t m tau d tau plus fine Yes. Yeah, it's frozen. I know. It is frozen. Sir. Yeah. Can you close some of the apps that were open? I have opened just two apps. Mm. Why would you assume that uh, I will open too many apps? Sir, on the screen it was showing. Okay, this is different. It was showing the history. On the screen it was showing that time. Yeah, it was showing the history. So your phone, person, meeting options. This Team Viewer is a background app anyway. So I'll uh, close Microsoft Edge. These two are background apps. Your phone and uh, Team okay. Viewer. I Microsoft Edge was extra. I've Closing that, I've closed that, and uh, one note crashed. Actually, so yeah. See, this is these are one note crashed, and so so the fun thing is. This laptop has a twelve has twelve GB RAM. Simply because uh, I added additional RAM to this. Anyway, let's close the task manager. Let it not. See, just fifty three percent memory is used. Anyway, yes, but uh, Windows is the only thing uh, that uh, allows uh, this kind of an ink input for me. So it's a necessary evil right now. Yeah. so this is fine now the now the slope detector
So yeah, before that. Ask computer science people. Yeah, so now the thing is that are interested in only the angle of the seed signal and not in its amplitude. Fine. So we would be interested only in the angle, not in the amplitude. So we take the angle. Angle and use it. So we take theta t and 2 pi kf. 0 to t m tau d tau plus rt by ac sine psi t minus fine this and so we write the first derivative of this as 2 pi kf mt plus rt Or rather, I would write, I would define Vt as 2 pi Kf mt plus 1 upon 2 pi Ac d by dt rt sine psi t minus phi t. Fine. So this the classical signal plus noise term. This is the classical signal plus noise term. Right. <clears throat> we yes. want everything in. Yeah, Rahul. So the point like uh, first of all, noise would be very uh, like disturbing. And if we take the derivative, wouldn't it like. Yeah, it so we are coming to that. Okay, okay, okay. We'll come to that. But uh, first, uh, let us see that uh, we have reduced it to something that uh, we uh, so we started off with where everything was in terms of angles of things okay okay or uh, we had started with the the term w w from the point where we had the we had trigonometric functions of both the signal and the noise and we have via manipulation we have reduced it to a form where uh, we can write it as signal plus noise oh. right yeah. and as for the disturbing noise you use this every day. Okay. You use FM receivers every day. Okay. Don't you? Yeah, like I was just like thinking of if we choose this as the term, uh, like uh, differentiation of the noise would be very uh, high. Like it can no, be. Why do you think that? Like because noise can be like, and at one point it can be something, and at the next second it can be anything else. So yeah, if we choose exactly. this term, 
yeah if, if you so the like, fun part about uh, noise is that uh, Uh, differentiation won't affect it i'll uh, show you what okay. what does this differentiation do okay okay so if you have instead you can look at that if you have phase modulation you won't need this differentiation okay in case you have phase no modulation this will be your uh, received signal or this will be your signal plus noise term if you have phase uh, if you have frequency modulation this is what you get fine okay so if we look at the signal power first so we want to know the signal power and noise power signal power and <clears throat> this is noise so signal power is kf square pm from what we did earlier right this we have derived in the previous yes. class yes so this and noise basically noise so we are passing rt sin psi t phi t through fine also rt is fine yes and at every given t phi t basically Thing. So, phi t is for at every point of time, phi t is uh, some constant angle. Fine. So, actually, what happens is that uh, psi t, if psi t is uniformly distributed. between minus pi and pi then psi t minus phi t will be between Minus pi minus phi t and pi minus phi t, right? Phi t is uh, not a random variable. Phi t is a constant. Yeah. Will it yes. not be so? So why is it constant? I didn't get it. Phi t. So phi t is not a part of the noise. for or for a given phi t you have a given phi t so but it was in the noise wala term right no like, it was it, it wasn't in the noise wala term it was okay it is due to the signal so phi t will be taking a specific value and to that you will be adding the noise you just show phi t above like where it was starting like just to confirm So phi t is this. See, phi t is this thing. This is phi t. Okay. Phi t is okay, the okay. part of the signal component. Okay. 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 Fine. So, this phi t minus phi t will be uniform between for given phi t. Then, given phi t, phi t will right. Yes, sir. And the fun thing is, or the best thing is, the range minus pi to pi. Since uh, we are take, talking about cos function and cos function and sine, uh, cos function or trigonometric functions, the range minus pi to pi is same as 
माइनस पाई प्लस माइनस डेल्टा फॉर एनी डेल्टा राइट यस सर सो विच बेसिकली मीन्स मीन्स साई टी माइनस फाइव टी विल ऑल्सो बी uniformly distributed in fine you have an angle you add uh, a uniformly distributed angle to it the resulting angle is still uniformly distributed so fine uh, yeah deepak i saw your question just now so classical means that like in am we had uh, this uh, signal plus so we reduce it to a signal plus noise uh, kind of a setup that's why yeah so <clears throat> this is also uniformly distributed in this range and therefore i can write this term as rt sin psi t minus phi t basically can be written as or is equivalent to rt sin psi t fine this is equivalent to rt sin psi t yes so therefore yes. but rt sin psi t equals this is a random process eta qt fine yes sir yes sir so basically theta prime t divided by 2 pi equals kf mt plus d by dt or plus 1 over 2 pi ac d by dt eta qt fine therefore so the differentiator is the differentiator is a linear time invariant system right yeah yeah so just a quirk in english or the, just a quirk in usage that uh, when i write the abbreviation lti i write an lti system because the pronunciation of l starts with the uh, a a uh, uh, and uh, when i write a linear time in the system so you can keep this in mind so <coughs> yeah anyway so is an lti system or a linear time invariant system therefore this i can write this operation 1 upon 1 upon 2 pi ac d by dt can be written as 
a system with an impulse response dt and a frequency response df and uh, from the little fourier transform that i know know that right this is right and therefore f square by ac square and the power spectral density is and not Sorry. As we know that bandwidth of the baseband message signal. fine therefore the noise power and fine this beast is okay yes sir yeah so but for an but ha uh, sorry but snrc the input snr is ac square by 2 wn not therefore the figure of merit figure of merit of an fm system is Three AC square KF square PM by two and not W cube divided by AC square by two W and not. Fine. This this goes to square and not and not two two AC square AC square. This equals. Three KF square PM divided by W square. Fine. W is the message bandwidth because uh, so yeah, W is the message bandwidth. So this, but.
in case of fm beta is proportional to kf root over pm when we defined the modulation index of fm this is how we defined it right if you go back to the definition of fm this is okay yes so any problems with this guys no sir no problem sir. okay excellent so since you don't have problems with this in case of fm this therefore the figure of merit for fm is proportional to beta square and since transmission bandwidth equals beta plus approximately equals beta plus 1 times w get that we can actually use up more transmission bandwidth for the same message signal and get a better figure of merit fine so you now get a, you this is the first trade off or this is an, another trade off that you are seeing in communication systems that you can actually sell your bandwidth because the larger the bandwidth the larger the transmission bandwidth that you use the better the received signal to noise ratio will be you get this yes sir yes excellent sir so, but uh, we can only use so much uh, of the transmission or the so total you can theoretically you have seen how wildly this beta behaves haven't you in while discussing fm we have seen how beta behaves right yes sir so and uh, we can we have seen that uh, the values we can go up to beta equals 20 beta equals 30 things like that so the larger the beta that we use more will be the transmission bandwidth and uh, consequently larger will be the uh, uh, received signal to noise ratio or uh, the signal to noise ratio that we receive so or in other words you can say that if you have a smaller fm bandwidth or smaller transmission bandwidth for an fm signal then uh, you can only afford uh, poor signal to noise ratios so it's one or the other fine okay sir so great so anyway so 
this is uh, a large uh, means uh, this uh, kind of uh, is the gist of the discussion on fm so there is a threshold effect in fm as well so hakin's textbook i'll just write things down because uh, we are uh, functioning now in a time limited mode so simon hakin textbook pages 220 to 226 are a reading exercise so there is not much math in there there are a lot of graphs and uh, lot some good explanation so what we can do is uh, you can read it we can discuss that on thursday or tomorrow so we uh, you can read pages 220 to 226 it won't take much time and uh, then we can discuss the dou doubts you have in those pages tomorrow and then continue sounds fine okay sir okay great so let's stop this discussion here and uh, move on to the tutorial you guys want a 5 minute break before the tutorial i'll get some water yes sir